Oh, animals. <laughs> they are amazing. They're loving, exciting, unconditional. Once established, the human-animal bond is truly one like no other. And I, don't know, I know that some of my closest and most consistent relationships have been with animals. Take a minute and think about your first or most impactful faunal experience. Was it in nature? A chance encounter with a black-tailed deer or nuthatch? Was it peering through the glass of an aquarium? Or looking into the eyes of an exotic species you've never seen before? I mean, maybe it was the time you held your first hamster, or meeting a friendly or an aggressive canine. It's the, di the diversity of these experiences that shape the roles that animals play in our lives. I know that my first impactful experience took place between myself and a chimpanzee. I was 11 years old, and I was off to the zoo with a backpack full of apples and oranges, off to feed the animals. This was at a time when we were still allowed to do so. And I remember approaching the chimpanzee exhibit and tossing an apple into one of them. One of them proceeded to catch it. And members of his cohort came over to see who had tossed this apple. Now I watched them from up above and they came over and looked up and the chimp who was eating the apple scanned the wall. There were, must have been about 50 visitors, saw me, locked eyes with me, and pointed at me. <laughs> it was amazing. It was humbling. It blew my mind. And I guess you could say that that's where my lifelong love of animals began. I've had a pretty awesome career path, and it's carved its way from wildlife biology to teaching in a formal setting, and eventually returning to my roots of becoming a zoologist and education director, as well as the director of a small walkthrough area at Wildlife Safari. I'm living the dream. I get to work hands-on every day with these animals, all while being able to educate about the importance of wildlife conservations and wild connections. I've seen and lived through some pretty amazing experiences. <laughs> Bird bites, and bear bites, animal births, animal deaths. And there's one story that I want to share with you today. This is the story of Pancake. Pancake and her sister were born at Wildlife Safari, weighing it at only a few ounces. And it was a highly anticipated birth through everyone involved. Keepers spent many sleepless nights watching the monitors for the telltale signs of contractions from the mother. And while the birth was textbook, we began to notice that a couple days later, they weren't gaining the weight that they should have at the anticipated rate and seemed to overall to be struggling to survive. Now, as zoologists, the decisions that we make are difficult, if not impossible, at times. And it's only through really understanding our animals that we're able to make the best decisions for them. This situation was particularly sensitive, as we had such high hopes that Pancake and her sister would grow up to join the breeding population of their species in zoos. You see, in the wild, 90% of cheetahs don't make it to four months of age. A lot of this is due to predation, but a lot of it is also due to the fact that they have such a small gene pool, it makes their immune systems compromised and susceptible to disease. So with all this in mind, we had to make a decision quickly, and we knew that this decision would impact not only Pancake, her sister, the keepers, but also the cheetah species as a whole, as well as everyone else who would get to meet them. So with this in mind, we decided to pull Pancake and her sister from her mom. And mere hours later, we lost her sister. And through this tragic loss, we discovered that Pancake's mom actually wasn't producing milk. And had we not pulled them, it's very likely that Pancake would have succumbed to the exact same fate as her sister. Now we had to play the role of hand-raising Pancake. And this entailed having someone with her for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, for the first six months of her life. And as a result, Pancake lives a life that's quite different from those cheetahs that are in the wild. Now, Pancake is the face of and sheds light on the myriad of threats that wild cheetahs face, many of which are human-wildlife conflict. Cheetahs right now are being killed to protect livestock, 
They're part of the illegal pet trade, and they're also enduring an enormous habitat loss. According to the Zoological Society of London, the Wildlife Conservation Society, and Panthera, there's a little over 7,000 cheetahs left in the wild. To put things, put things into perspective, this is down from 100,000 cheetahs just over a century ago. Compounded with this is the fact that they've lost about 75% of their habitat. So this brings us to cheetahs that exist in US zoos across the United States. Currently, we have about 300 cheetahs uh, that exist in these places, many of which are backed by the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, or the AZA. The AZA, in conjunction with the Species Survivals Plan, cooperatively manages these cheetah populations in order to breed as many as possible to really increase their species diversity, their genetic diversity. Now, at Wildlife Safari, we're really good at doing this. So much so that we're the number two cheetah breeding facility in the world. <laughs> to, to date, uh, we've bred over 210 cheetah cubs. <laughs> and it's only through the hard work of cheetah keepers and detailed observations that we're able to do so. And while one day we do hope to um, be able to reintroduce these back into the wild, right now we're just working on really um, maintaining a sustainable captive cheetah population. So why should we care? I mean, we all know we lead such incredibly busy lives. Why should we care about these species that are so far removed from our everyday lives? Why should we care that every single day we're losing dozens of species, dozens of plants, mammal, insect, bird species? And this is a conservative estimate. We should care because without sea otters, the level of sea urchins would rise so much that they'd eat all the kelp forests which give um, home and habitat and food to so many species of ducks, geese, and snails. We should care because without African elephants, the African savanna would not be a savanna, as they forge the way for savanna grasses, fertilize soils, and provide homes and habitats for other herd species. We should care because without insects and the role they play with pl uh, flowering plants, the world as we know it right now would cease to exist in 50 years. 50 years. The entire delicate balance of our planet is being shifted. And through the destruction of all these species, we're inadvertently destroying ourselves. So what do we do? How can we turn all this knowledge and words into action? Every single one of you guys can become citizen scientists. You could visit sites such as zooniverse.org and participate in real world science. Pick out a project that you love. You could learn how to count animals on a camera trap, count stars, identify rocks or plants. You could visit an AZA accredited zoo or aquarium. AZA donates $160 million every single year to both in situ and ex situ conservation projects. Currently, they're funding over 2,500 projects in over 100 countries. You could go for a walk. You could learn how to identify birds, learn how to identify frog calls, or on a very doable level, plant some flowers for the bees, refrain from pesticide use, or the next time you see a spider or a beetle, why not help it on its way? In our increasingly urbanized and technology-driven world, it's so important that we make these wild connections. And I know how difficult it is, but we have to. Because in, in the words of Sir David Attenborough, a lifelong advocate for our planet, no one's going to protect what they don't care about, and no one's going to care about what they've never experienced. No one's going to care about what we've never experienced. But we have to. Pancake is. <laughs> Through Pancake's presence, 
She's raising awareness and playing a direct role in fighting extinction for our species. Without these wild connections, we can allow ourselves to look the other way and remain silent contributors to the loss of so many amazing, living, breathing species. I want you to take a look at Pancake. I want you to look into her eyes and let it be this connection for you, just as that chimpanzee was for me. One that's gonna inspire courage and advocate action. One that's gonna make us be that positive change that we all know we can be right now. Because if not right now, then when? Thank you. She's really dedicated to <laughs> conservation. <laughs>